Hi, this is Andy Maker, and welcome to my presentation on how to use Microsoft Project 2010. Tonight's presentation, we're going to go over five real-world lessons learned on how to use Microsoft Project. Now, the challenge that many people face when they first get exposed to Microsoft Project is really Microsoft Project has a learning curve, and many managers think they can just sit you down and give it to you and give, install Microsoft Project on your desktop and have you use it like Excel. Now, if you've ever entered tasks or you tried to do activity sequencing or resource leveling in Microsoft Project, I think you all know that it's definitely like uh, Microsoft Excel. Uh, but really, if used correctly, you know, Microsoft Project is a powerful scheduling tool that will prove to be a valuable tool in your project management toolkit. So today we're going to go over five lessons learned. Of the five, the first, understand the important tables and views. Understand how to create a summary task for your project. Understand how to create company holidays and team vacation calendars. Define the right level of tasks in the work breakdown structure, as well as communicate the project schedule. So the first one is under understand the different tables and views. Microsoft Project consists of a lot of project data that can be accessed through a different views and by rotating through various tables. So here in this chart, you see a listing of all the different tables and views that are available to you. And these are just a few of the views and tables that are available in the tool. Uh, if you pause the video, you can take a look at the different steps and how to navigate through Microsoft Project by selecting View from the ribbon menu and select the, either the Gantt chart, the network diagram, resource sheet, and so on. In this slide, I'm showing you how to actually access one of the tables uh, by going into the View menu item of the ribbon bar and clicking on Tables. Here I can access the Cost table. Now the Cost table will give, uh, obviously, cost information uh, about the project as well as typically when you start working with Microsoft Project, you're using the entry view. Uh, but by switching through the different tables, you can get access to a whole bunch of underlying project data to make better project decisions. The next are the different views. So in this case, I've looked at the task usage view where I wanted to get a list of all the tasks and all the resources that were assigned to the different tasks so I could do proper resource loading and get an idea where people were allocated on the project. Now, Microsoft Project has a wide variety of views, and it's definitely worth your time to orient yourself to the different views and how you can get access to the different data. So the second lesson learned is learn to create a summary task. And what a summary task will do is it will take the name of your project schedule and it will create a high-level uh, summary task that will roll up all the project data into one, one file. So in this example, you see here uh, at the task zero, is in the work breakdown structure, we've created a summary task that I called the WS detail example. And in this case, it'll go through all of your subtasks and automatically calculate the roll up of it being 20 days in duration, as well as if you looked at cost, it'll summarize the cost for you as well. Now to access that, you just have to go through the file options menu. And you scroll down and you look at the advanced section and you click on the checkbox here that says show project summary task and it'll instantly create uh, a summary level in your project schedule. Previously, people would have to insert a task and then indent all the tasks one level in, but this way you can create the summary task automatically when you start building your project schedule. So a third lesson learned is, you know, remember to create company and holiday calendars. So if you're working in the United States, does anybody really work on December 25th or January 1st? You need to account for those holidays in your schedule, otherwise it's going to, Microsoft Project is going to assume that you're going to be working on those dates. And you know, think about uh, you know, your team member Steve. You know, didn't he schedule vacation on June 14th through the 16th? If Steve's scheduled for work in the project schedule, well, he's going to run into challenges there because you know, you're going to run into end, uh, end date problems because he's out fishing. So to update the project uh, calendar, you can do that by selecting Change Working Time from the Project Menu tab. And the Change Working Time dialog box will be displayed. And if you select the standard calendar, you can click on a date range and then enter the name and the specific date range for the non-working time. You can repeat this process. So in this case, I put in Christmas vacation for the entire team from December 26th all the way through December 30th. So now when we do scheduling, Microsoft Project will advance the dates and realize that no one is scheduled for, to do work at that time. Our next lesson learned is make sure you define the right level of tasks in the work breakdown structure. And this is always a common question about, well, what does that mean? What is really the right level uh, of, uh, in the Microsoft Project schedule? Now, a guideline that you'll receive is a work package is usually no more than 40 hours. Uh, 
but really you want to break down the tasks so they are in manageable chunks so you can accurately monitor and control the project deliverables. So let's look at an example. So in this slide here I have uh, some work being done over three weeks where we're doing interface testing with Argentina and we're doing interface testing with our Brazil system. In this case I've assigned, uh, it's a duration of three weeks, and I've assigned John, Karen, and Jeff to do the Argentina interface testing. And Keith, Rob, and Linda are assigned to work on the Brazil interface testing. Well, the reason why this is weak is because within a span of three weeks of duration, I really don't have much visibility into what these resources are working on and really getting an idea of what is their capacity to take on additional work. Um, instead, a better way of doing this is break down that test. So in the second example here under better, the Argentina feed testing is broken into an hourly payroll interface, a salary payroll interface, as well as a tax rate interface. And each of these resources, John, Karen, and Jeff, will be spending five days uh, on each of those individual tasks. This way I'm holding accountability and breaking it down so one, one task is assigned to one resource. This becomes particularly useful when you go and do resource leveling. Same thing you see here with the Brazil feed testing. So hourly payroll interface, salary payroll interface, and the tax rate interface with Keith, Rob, and Linda being assigned individually to each of those tasks. So you know, PMBOK will tell you that a 40-hour um, work package is, is one guideline to go by. Uh, if you feel you need to break it down further so you get better control, you know, it's your project schedule, it's your deliverable, you want to be able to build that in the way you can best manage your project and help manage the team. And the final lesson learned is really communicate the project schedule. So many project managers will make the mistake of building this beautiful project schedule only to put it into a drawer or lose it on the shared drive. You know, the whole purpose of the schedule is to build a forecasted model of future events. And you update that model based on the team progress and then you get a better understanding of where your end dates are and if you're actually going to be able to meet the dates you committed to your business partner. You want to communicate your assignments and review the schedule weekly so you get a good understanding of how well are you uh, making progress on, on what you predicted and how well you're going to uh, achieve on the project. You know, another problem you run into is they'll say, hey, you know, my team doesn't have Microsoft Project installed. Well, nowadays there's a number of PDF writers that you can install that are freely available. Here are two that I've used before. PDF 995, just go to pdf995.com. You can install this as a, uh, a writer or as a driver uh, into your machine, as well as with PDF Creator. So instead of doing a file print and printing to an actual printer, you can print to, this becomes a virtual PDF printer. Uh, and this will actually take the Microsoft Project file and just like you would send it out to a printer, it, but instead it creates an actual PDF for you that you can then distribute to the team. So these are just five of the many tactical tips and lessons learned in our Microsoft Project series. If you'd like to learn more, please go ahead and visit tacticalprojectmanagement.com. Thanks.